The 2015 Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. cultural island, the French in the north, the Spanish in the, in the south, they are Latin, and the Basque uh, originally were not Latin, that makes us different, nobody is able to tell us you know, what's going on with our origins. about the culture too and um, that's why but I have lots to learn I know some people among you have already started the language and I know Gareth for example and I know I know Andy and I know uh, some, someone else I am you and anyone else has studied a little bit ah yeah also, and Shani so please <laughs> Jump in if you like. So, um, it's a pre Indo European language, completely unique. In the, well, or um, so far, the scholars haven't agreed on the origin. 
and uh, it, apparently it shares only a few analogies with uh, Caucasic and Berber dialects. It's the so that would make it the oldest living language in Europe. Study published in 2013. That's the most recent study I am aware of by a Spaniard There's professor. No, no, it's okay. That's the foundation oh, okay. that is you reading. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just if I need some facts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. This uh, was I don't remember his name exactly, but this is a professor from the Basque Country, so Spanish professor, and he in 2013 he tried he tried he tried to prove a link between Basque and Dogo, which is an African language. I'm not, I don't remember exactly. I don't think it's a southern language. I, I think it's a western. African language, but apparently this um, essay, well, these ideas have not been well received <laughs> in the linguist community. <laughs> so it's an agglutinative, we'll see a little bit, language. So uh, as you know, each affix attached to the root expresses one grammatical property, gender, number, or case, we'll see afterwards. Also, Basque has a rich system of case markers so just Hungarian, for example, as some of you may have uh, learned or speak. Basque has 12 cases, and Hungarian, if I'm not mistaken, because that differs, differs uh, has 21 cases. Basque is mostly a subject-object-verb language, so verb is at the end, but not always. Also, this is the most typical order, but also an S, uh, an O, sorry, object, subject, verb is possible, as well as other orders. Okay. This is uh, <laughs> a map of the Basque country, uh, Galeria, uh, I mean, the cultural entity, you could say that in the future. Because, as you can see, uh, there's, well, those are the names in, in Basque, in Euskaraz, that is in Basque. Vizcaya, which is Vizcay uh, in, in English, okay? So that would be the name, huh? <laughs> Bilbao in English or Spanish, and usually Bilbo in, uh, in Basque, or also Bilbao in Basque. Then Gipuzkoa. And uh, this is where San Sebastián is, that's the capital. And, um, however, in Basque, uh, we call it, they call it what? It's called Donosti or Donostia. So a different name. This Araba, in Spanish, Alaba, Alaba, as we, you know, Spain. In Spanish, you don't pronounce it B. So Araba would be Alaba. And um, yeah, the, the capital city is Vitoria, in Spanish and English, yes. However, in Basque, it's Gasteiz. So it's completely different name. This is Navarro Garaya, so Pamplona <laughs> in Spanish. And here, the capital, oh, sorry, the Navarra, and uh, the capital is Pamplona, but in Basque, it's Irunea. And this is the French Basque country. The three provinces, I am not exactly, yeah, no, how they are, but well, those are the names in Basque. And uh, so there's two parts, as the, the video said, two parts of the Basque country. And so seven provinces, the north of the Pyrenees, uh, the Basque called Iparralde, and the south, Egoalde, means exactly that. <laughs> north of the Pyrenees and south of the Pyrenees. And uh, this, is, uh, this would be Euskal Herria or Euskadi. And I find moving that well. There's another name for all the country, which is called, which is Saspiak. Saspiak Bat, which means the seven are one. And that's another name, very old name for the past country. The seven provinces. So does anyone know this song? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's a very um, very very a uh, famous, popular uh, folk song in, in the Basque country. It's called Before Translation, as you know. And uh, particularly during um, uh, Franco's dictatorship, but now all the same, and probably before Frank too. And uh, everyone knows it, people sing it, 
the taberna and the weddings and that. Okay, so I'm going to sing for you, and then um, you can sing it with me. <laughs> when the Roman came to Spain, well, to, what, what, to the Iberian Peninsula, and they, they, they wouldn't be conquered. So, so they've um, borrowed words for, from different, um, different languages for more than 2,000 years. So they've got this an example, but words of Celtic or Celtic origin, under a woman, maybe old Irish under, Aita, father, old Irish become Atair. Ahar. Or? It's pronounced Ahar. Ahar, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Germanic origin, but probably not from German, but um, I mean, Gothic or other old <coughs> uh, Germanic language. Zilar, silver, Arano, even from Gothic, they say, or could be Ara. Romans, from Romans languages in general, throughout the, the centuries, Iskola, school, Guruza, cross, Liburu, book, are from Latin directly. Elisa, church, Gausa, thing, this, this is a really funny one, this to me, which is dominis, dominista, doministicu, which comes, which comes from dominus tecum, God be with you, but this is not something you say after someone sneezes, but it's the name of the sneeze itself. <laughs> to sneeze and so. And then from Arabic, of course, alcalde, alcalde in Spanish and a mayor, alcandora, sure, azoka, market, maybe someone with Arabic. Azuk, Azuk, Azuk. 
So, does anyone know what an ergative case is? Okay. So maybe someone would like to explain better than me? Or, yeah? Please? You? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Well, I, I know it from Hindi, so yeah. I don't know if that um, also applies to uh, ask. There, there's yeah. a difference between, as we all know, between transitive and intransitive words. Could you speak about it? <coughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I said the that there's a uh, difference between intransitive and transitive words, which means words that take an object or don't. Mm -hmm. Those who take an object are transitive words, and those who don't are intransitive words. Mm -hmm. And the object in Hindi, no, I don't know how it works yeah, in that. In Hindi, same. in the past, the word um, of, like, if it is an intransitive word, um, the word changes according <coughs> to gender and um, either single object or plural, according to the object and not to the subject. Mm -hmm. Which means if I say, I read uh, a newspaper or I read. A book. Then the word the that changes would be word, the word yeah. would be depending yeah. whether it is male or female oh, okay. different. Oh okay. But it's the me, it's not the object. It's no, subject. it's the object. The object. It's whether uh -huh. the book or the newspaper is either male or female. Oh, okay. And it's not the subject. I don't know if that's um, well this at least what I've um, studied to be a derivative case in this case means I guess, I guess. The ergative comes from ergo in Latin, so I do. So this means, it's an example, we have the verb again, chori. So, <coughs> example, this is an intransitive verb, ibili, 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 da. ibili, there's something else, that there are many uh, verbs in Basque that meet the, um, the auxiliary verb, but not to form um, other tenses, but just in the present tense, but there's something else, but well. So, this means we have Choria, Elur Gaiyangil Bitrenda. This is, seems to walk, it's an intransitive verb. The ending of the subject is A, because it's an intransitive verb. However, if um, we use intransitive verb, the, yeah, means uh, the, the, the verb is um, walking up on, I guess, on, <coughs> on, on the snow, or above the snow, or on the snow, yeah. um, and this is to eat young, yeah, so this choriak atoa yatendu, the bird is eating the, the corn, or corn, so since this subject is doing something with an object, so a transitive verb, the end of the subject ends, the ending, so we are on the case. So I don't know if you, or of course you, before, yeah, here actually the me would be me, I, but this says Nick, because that's a transitive verb. Well, that's, I thought I, I pointed this out because I think it's very unique. It seems from what I've read. But I, but I think it's more important to point out that the, yeah. that the, uh, that the absolute case yeah. is kept here for the object now. Now here is the, here's the subject because uh, exactly. it's, it's intransitive and this is absolute. Yeah. And when it comes to the transitive verb, the, the, the the object in the same case as the, the subject here, and the new subject gets the new case of the mm -hmm. So that's the that's important point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it seems that this the Basque is in this uh, regard unique among European languages, but not rare, as Daniel pointed out. So Hindi has, and uh, but apparently the closest ergative language would be geographically would be Georgian. I think Korean has also this feature, and it's not that rare worldwide, but yes, it is in, in, in Europe. Europe. In Europe, yes. Mm. Then, this is something, at least from the languages I know, which is a three that I don't think I've seen in other languages. I know, of course, I can ask all of them. So, three participant verbs. This means that that there's more information 
in the in the verb in the tense that in other languages. For example, the sandup, I said that this is the information contained here. So I said those things, a sandvitu. I said that to you, so two things. So the three participants, so the subject, the direct object, and the indirect object. Es an I said that to you. To one person. Yeah, to you. To, to who you yeah, want. I think this is, uh, I don't remember if it's female, I mean, you can change that. No. I don't no, no, no. I can't change it. It's only to one person. Okay. You I want. Not but one you, person. You know, you yeah, there's the plural. Es an Vizikut. I said those things to you. Do you want? Do you want? But many, many things. Many things do you want? Mm -hmm. I thought this was fun. <laughs> what else? Yeah. This. There is uh, also, I thought it was singular, the way they think about the, uh, the me and the, and, the, and the seasons. So for example, the, it's, it's said to, they say that originally the Basque week had only three days. So, and then, of course, you see that these uh, words can come from Latin. So, the, the three days of the week were astelen. Then I, I haven't added the a because it's not I mean, the, actually the, the root of the word, I think. Astelen, which is, means aste is weak. Leen means the first of, so the first day of the week. Astearte means the middle of the week. As they ask him, the last day of the week. That's what they mean. The three months. And then, I don't know when, well, four more days were added throughout the century. Ostegun, which is a, a day dedicated to Otzi, which is a mythological figure in the Basque mythology. Then, the so is that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or yes. Monday, yeah. Wednesday, Sunday? Yeah, no, it's, it's the normal order. Yes, it's, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> a really long weekend. Hasta el burro is weekend. No, but the end of the day works three days, and then the holiday is Sunday. Ah, <laughs> no, well, I just wrote it like that so you could see that those these three four days were added afterwards. And this is the day dedicated to Orzi. So and this literally <laughs> Ospiral is the it's after the day dedicated to Orzi. Then this one I don't know I don't understand very well why, but then this means less than four days after the week. Something like that, that's what I found. And this is um, means um, literally moon rising. And uh, the, um, yeah, since I think the Basque, from what I've researched, have such a um, close relationship with nature in general, I found I find interesting that the words um, that correspond to seasons, almost all of them, three of them, are uh, around the idea of summer, which is Uda. So Uda Berri would be spring, that means literally new summer. Then summer, and then uh, autumn, fall, Udasken, it's the end of the summer. So like they are always, and then this nebu, this is um, winter. So it seems like the, the whole year they're, they're craving the sun. And I find nice. So this gentleman here is, as you know, in the Basque country is a cuisine and a gastronomical powerhouse in the world. And uh, cuisine and the kitchen are at the very heart of Basque culture. This is uh, an eco acha. This is a three Michelin star Ion chef from the Basque country. Now he's, I think he's in, in Asia right now. The cuisine is influenced by the abundance of produce from the sea on one side and the Ebro Ballet on the other side. And um, you may know, you may not, uh, San Sebastián, Donosti, is the second city in the world with the most Michelin-starred restaurants after Kyoto in Japan. Okay. Yeah. Onda Gifula, that is, what uh, appetit, 
And this, uh, this family picture, this is Juan Maria Zak and his daughter, Elena Zak, who was awarded with, um, um, who got the award of, uh, I think it was 2014, uh, best <coughs> female chef in the world, Elena Zak. Um, yeah, there's also great confectionery and pastry tradition across uh, the Basque country. <laughs> so, these are the famous pinchos or pinchoac. I don't know if you, this is famous finger food from the, from the Basque country. And you can, I don't know if you, any of you have been there. No? Not yet? Yeah, Andy has. Right. Okay. There's a Basque restaurant in Berlin, Onegin. Ah, so yeah. In Neukölln. Can't try it. <laughs> this is a fish, a, a fish dish, so a rain. This is fish. And, uh, well, this is famous Euskal Pastela or Biscotti, which is a cake, vanilla flavor. Then, <laughs> I wanted to show you something that I find very cool, so I brought it. Well, this is from the film Ilargi Berry, New Moon. You might have uh, seen it or uh, maybe not. But why is it here? <laughs> what? Why is it in this presentation? Wait a second. <laughs> Do we have to the What? I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. So that was my desire too. 
Okay, these are um, some ideas. Well, maybe most of it is thought of this. But um, you can find more about Euskera uh, and learn in Euskera. Of course, Wikipedia on the blog site. Hang on there. Uh, Memorize has courses too, and probably other platforms. And, you know. um, then, of course, in Spanish there are many things because the, the, the regional government makes an active e effort and has been making an active effort for the past 30 years to revive the language. Aprenderuskera.com uh, if you're in Spanish, Gramática de Artica de Euskera from Hilary Subiri, Subiri, you can find it online and download it. Euskaras.net, Euskalcultura.com. Then, some ideas, you know, or more advanced, but maybe you can find some titles. Basque language modern films for the past two or three years. Loreac, Laza de Tazabala, the famous political matcher that happened in the 80s, I think, Amarin Squad, and then this TV series, which was uh, fin which finished recently, Boen Kale, literally the, the street above, Kale, 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 uh, which was the longest running daily Basque and Spanish soap opera for 24 years, I think, something like that. They terminated recently. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think you can find it on YouTube or in Cale. It's a normal soap opera, like yeah, everyday thing, couples, uh, things that happen in the like. And then music, uh, then music, musica, like Euskara, for example. And maybe some of you, uh, Asimil knows, knows, knows more. Asimil, okay, from okay. French, French and from French and Spanish, okay. And uh, I've got a little video to, to end, to let the troubadour that started the, the show here finish it at the end. But I'll play that at the end. No, we can talk if you want. I have some other stuff, uh, just in case, you know, small phrases or, um, yeah, can't say hello, this, how are you, <laughs> if you like, yeah. or no. I mean, we can do, we have some time. Well, what Basque radio would you recommend? Because there, there is Hans Blur, they have every day 30 minutes in Basque, but probably it's a little bit different than the Spanish version. As you said, with this and because the yeah, Spanish have no sh and I, the French have no But as you know, there was this um, uh, researcher, I think in, I read in the 70s, <coughs> that um, studied the different dialects. There are way more than seven dialects, but he decided to group to <coughs> seven groups of dialects. And so I guess, you know, since the language has been, or had been, yeah, still is. Ah, yeah, I can tell you, I think that, yeah, so I want about the map. Yeah, sorry, I that. <coughs> there are about 700,000 speakers, native speakers, and probably the, the number is increasing because the, the past 25, 30, even longer years, um, uh, there, there's been a system of Icastolas, that is um, Basque language only exclusively at schools. So now um, the thing is something uh, funny is um, happening is that children in some areas are teaching their parents the language because the yeah they use it in, at school they live in, in things have experience in that language and then they want to talk to parents about that and now uh, yeah so there's a generation 20 or 20 something year old generation that's already that can speak more and more but of this around i think it was 660,000 people uh, native speakers live in spain and about Five and uh, fifty thousand in in France. Yes, but I'm saying something else, and I went I'm distracted. Yes. So I'm oh, sorry to finish up. Yeah, the radio. I haven't used radio much, but I guess that maybe Euskal Televista 
I think at least you know, 15 years back there were two uh, channels. I don't know if you know with the shortage of resources and this and that in Spain. Maybe that's just one, Euskal Televista, but they might have a radio. They have very good quality programs and a lot of streaming of television as well. And there was also there's some French stuff, purely French stations with the French. Tell us a little bit about the status of the language uh, in Spain and what the Spanish government does to make them protect or to enforce the languages or just in general the situation. I think those um, <coughs> capabilities, I, I'm sure there's, there's no word in English, but are transferred to the regional government of uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, I don't think the central government uh, has any same that? May I anymore? Yeah. So the, the, the Basque country is divided into north, part which is French. There is no language policy in France at all. They have only some protection by the European laws as, as a minority language. They even don't count the numbers of native speakers. And in the south, the Basque country, in Spain is divided in Navarra, uh, which is it has a, another form of autonomy than the West, which is called Euskadi. And uh, in Euskadi, there is a Basque government which really enforces and they have schools. And if you can decide whether you take your school in, in Spanish, with Basque is a foreign language, and all the other way around, or stage between, but most do it in, in Basque. And in Navarra, only in the very north, it is an official language. And in, in, in the south, in the main part of Navarra, only Spanish is official language. But, by the, but in Euskadi, you can use um, bars everywhere. Yeah. <coughs> it was under Franco died in 1975. That was the end yeah, of the dictatorship. Franco, Franco died in 1974. Oh, five, five, five. Yeah. Oh, And yeah, and I guess that. It was the end of the dictatorship, but it took some years to develop yeah. a new constitution and so on to, to get it by. From the early 30s I to guess, the yeah, well, early the 80s. Civil war uh, won by Franco's side uh, ended in 1939. I guess that's probably. Stop. 